Hello there, welcome back to the Purposeful Lifestyle Forum and this is our sixth edition. Yes, so the sixth edition is actually focusing on the second topic we're taking in light of our theme for this month, which is on friendship, dynamics of friendship. So based on that, we're going to, you know, narrow our discussion today on the types of friends we should have. So last week, just a recap, we talked about who a friend is and, you know, the essence and standards expected from, you know, friendship, the beneficial aspect of friendship, you know, and the reason why God, you know, ordained friendship to exist. So moving on in our sequential um, way we do carry out the theme, we'll proceed today by, you know, looking at the types of friendships that are existent, you know, the healthy ones and the unhealthy ones, because, you know, for everything that is good, there's also, you know, the bad side of it. So yes, we understand that, you know, God has ordained for friendship to be essential and be part of, you know, human existence, because as I said in my previous discussion, God himself also functioned as a social, um, you know, he, 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 he expressed himself in Trinity to show us that even if, we are made in his image we also have to function in different ways by you know learning from people that he brings to our lives you know to fulfill destiny because i mean we can't fulfill destiny all by ourselves yes we need god's direction we need god's um, guidance but at the same time he plants people in our life that could you know help us join the dirts of life that has to do with fulfilling destiny and purpose so with that being said, I would like you to know that friendship is not something to run away from. You can't do life alone, as I previously said. So yes, um, there are so many benefits of friendship, which I would like to emphasize on before we proceed with the types of friendship that do exist. First of all, it is known even by research that, you know, when you have friends around you, I mean good friends anyway, you know, there's tendency for you to live longer. There's tendency for you to be happier. There's tendency for you to... Um, not to suffer depression or go through moody smooth swings and all of that. So God knows why he has ordained companion. He wrote it in, in Genesis, you know, let's make a, a companion for Adam. So that companionship for Adam was also for him to have someone to talk with, for him to do life with. And by so doing, it mean, it implies that each and every one of us as human beings, we do deserve to have somebody we call a friend and not just a friend a good friend and not just a good friend a good and godly friend which we will also discuss next week so for this um, week we are specifically focusing on the categories of friends that do exist you know so i will take it in three um ways first of all i would like to talk about the friends we face in our stages of life the friends we we come across in our stages of life then i'll proceed to you know also discuss on the types of friends that are you know important for that are healthy for us let's just call it healthy friends healthy friendships and then we'll also look at the unhealthy friendship so we're trusting god that as we do this as we proceed with this discussion that the holy spirit will give me utterance you know as i said these are things that the lord has ministered to me has led me to talk about and I'm also learning as I'm doing my Bible study, you know, so it will interest you to know that as I'm sharing with you guys, I'm also addressing myself and not really myself out. I'm sorry for not starting with my name. I'm Nonye Emanuela Chukuma, your proposal lifestyle coach. In case you're catching us up for the first time, you are welcome. Please do remember to subscribe to her channel. I always forget to mention that maybe because that is not my actual purpose for this, you know, project. So moving on, I would like us to proceed with categories of friends we 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 you know that we meet in our in our stages of life you know we start with our childhood friends that is depending on you know where life you know where god the kind of parents god has given us where god ordained us to start our life with you know our neighborhood so childhood friends could start with your siblings it could now proceed to your neighbors and then Moving on, when you start going to school, you meet other friends and you call them school friends in which you have your lunch with, you spend your break time with, you catch up with, and after school, you come back home 
and then life continues so we have the childhood friends then proceed to the school friends and here with me also i wrote down you have um the friends you meet you know during your adolescent stage of life you know sometimes they could also end up being your lifelong friends so yeah we have those ones we also have colleagues as friends you know those that we work with those that we study with so you know all these stages are things are, are phases of life so these are friendships that we make along the phases of life that we find ourselves and then probably when we're done with school by the next thing perhaps is to get married you also make friends along that phase of you know single season you know you have friends that you meet in that season of your life you proceed to having friends that you you meet when you get married maybe um, attending marriage courses or during the course of your parenting you also meet certain friends so they call them friends friends you meet in every stage of your life so stages of friendship in your life those are the kind of you know friends or the categories of friends you you make along your you know phase or stages of life but now we're going to look into um healthy and unhealthy friendship because along the line all of these friends that you are made perhaps your childhood friend your secondary school friend your colleagues at work during the course of your marriage during the course of your single season during the course of your parenting you know you move around you change destinations you know as god is leading you and as destiny is taking you you know you meet different people and these are the people that join you know the dots of your life so but during this course some of them might be healthy and some of the friends unfortunately could be unhealthy so i would want us to share together the you know for us to be able to identify if we sit back and in retrospect you know try to look back at our lives which of these friends fit into you know these two major categories the unhealthy and healthy friends that we have made during the course of life it could help us to you know reflect and i'm not saying you we should have any cause for regret because i believe that um friends that we have made um some might not be pleasant and even when they are unpleasant i believe that there are lessons that you we must have taken from it and those lessons are to help us you know build ourselves better and to prepare ourselves you know for the future um there's a part of the scripture that says we should guard our hearts with all diligence for out of it comes you know from out, for out of it comes the abundance of life so it's important that as we do make friends it's also important that we guard our hearts and the way we can guard our hearts is the kind of people we allow into our lives because if we rely on healthy friends if we allow on healthy friendships it affects our hearts it affects what we produce so that scripture does not only focus on us it also focus on people that we associate with because you are um the association you keep is what determines your 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 lifestyle is what determines your sense of self is what determines your sense of wholeness is what determines your destiny is what determines your purpose is what determines your perspective to life believe me or not each and all of these um friendships we make during the course of life affect the decisions we make in life so i would love to start with the good part of it i'm sure you also want to listen to the good part of it before we go to the, <laughs> the next side so if you ask me i have here with me written down seven types of very healthy friendship that we need in our life the first i have here with me i said is uh, a true friend you know scripture tells us in proverbs 27 verse 5 you know that a good a good a true friend will correct you even when you're wrong i don't want to read out the scripture because time will not permit me so yeah a true friend will listen to you and speak the truth and let you know where you have gone wrong when you are out of order because sometimes you know you need somebody that checks you you can't really you know you need that person that watches or sees the blind spots you can't know everything about yourself there sometimes you you err there sometimes you you, you just uh, find yourself doing things that are not maybe even pleasing and glorifying to, for god or things that are not acceptable so it takes a true friend to stand up to tell you the truth that this thing you have done is good and this thing you have done is not good the thing i like about true friends is that you know they're able to tell you the good things that you are also doing not also not always pointing out the negative sides when you have a friend that keeps on picking on negative things that you're doing without complimenting you on the good side of it should give it a look into again because as i said we're going to proceed to the negative aspect and i'll discuss further on this so it's important to pay attention to, to friends that are, are able to stand up and courageous enough to tell you when you are going right and also 
when you are taking wrong steps so that you too can retrace your steps and you know put yourself in order secondly i have who um, um a, a category of friendship we call godly kingdom friends godly or kingdom friends you know when we look at the book of proverbs 332 it says godly friendships are profitable proverbs 3 proverbs 332 says um, godly friends are profitable i mean if you have um godly friends if you have kingdom friends you will have kingdom values that you can't even write up about because they speak with you they tell you the things they are doing for god the messages they listen to they share with you so you will also get inspired you will want to listen to what they listen to you will want to feed yourself from their insights and if they are if they are if their messages if they are uh, you know your discussions will even take a different perspective it will be more edifying to the spirit you know so um i i i am lucky to have a few of those a couple of friends that i find in this category and i tell you it's actually helping me reshape my life especially as i'm getting older i'm beginning to realize that there are so many things that you know that are not necessary that i do pay attention to so having such kind of kingdom friends they always put you in order even when you are going out of your boundaries or when you don't even realize that you are you know you are losing your guards they try to help you and they put um you know they help you to you know fulfill destiny they help you to fulfill purpose because they also are purposeful so i would say kingdom friends or godly friends are actually purposeful friends that help you to as they are propelling towards you know as they are moving towards achieving their purpose they in some sort of, sort of way also affect you and i'm not saying that this should be one-sided you should also rub off on them you know we can see such kind of friendship with um the three hebrew boys you know when they were told to bow down to um the idol you know three of them were other man because they had that kingdom value that this is wrong and they none of them went against each other they stood in loyalty to one another because they knew that they were standing on kingdom values on kingdom principles the same with daniel you know and his friends that refused to eat the, with, with the king's meat so we have also moses and aaron so in terms of kingdom friendship um you see that you have a friend that is fulfilling purpose alongside with you perhaps you guys are doing programs together or you're sharing you know the kind of things you do you are passionate and interested about each other fulfilling purpose you are pushing one another encouraging one another even when the other maybe is you know a bit worried or doubtful about what god has called him or her to do you keep encouraging and persuading you know so that is the um the, the, the benefit of having a kingdom or godly kind of a friend so moving on we have the, um, the covenant friendship you know this is so exciting to me because yesterday i took my time to read first samuel chapter 20 and i think for some reason it's not like i've not heard the story of jonathan and david's friendship but like you know the, uh, god gave me more insight as i studied that scripture first samuel 20. i got to understand how much jonathan loved david so much to the point that he was willing to take a bullet for him i mean uh, i read it and i got emotional that friendship was really deep and you know the way they, they parted the, the kind of um um, towards the ending of that chapter, you know, there was there was an agreement they had that um, David was going to hide in a cave, and then if he throws and a spare, you know, they had already uh, planned it. If he throws a spear and it goes beyond a certain boundary, when David hears what he says, he will know whether he should run away, you know, because David was already suspecting. He was already, you know, having this impression that um, Jonathan's dad, King Saul, was, you know, going to. And needed wanted to kill him you know so but jonathan was not as sure but the moment jonathan found out he made sure he made a way for you know david to to depart and even that was again even to the um to the um against his father's will he didn't mind that his father was angry he didn't mind that his father was furious because he cherished the friendship so much and we know from scripture that you know that friendship even transcended to generations so that was a covenant friendship you know jonathan kept his side of the agreement to ensure that he helped david to escape the um, you know the wrath of his father so you can study that in first samuel 20 you know it's it's quite interesting when you read it you understand that it's important to have a very good and covenant friend you know that can stand for you against all odds so we have mentorship kind of friendship where you have a godly person that you look up to person that has gone ahead of you you know perhaps has um is older than you so to speak you know because i mean when we talk about friendship we're not looking at 
you being of the same age with the same persons it's good to also have some categories of people that are older than you that you can seek counseling advice word of knowledge pray together you know so your 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 mentorship friendship could actually be your mentors or coaches you know though you have might have boundaries with them but i mean it's good for you to have such kind of people that will guide you know and direct you know your christian growth your spiritual growth and your spiritual journey as well so we see that in the life of ruth and naomi they had mutual respect for one another we all know the story of ruth and naomi of course i don't have to repeat that i think i i shared i discussed about in my previous um this and we can read it up in in the, in the scriptures you know so naomi ruth ruth was the uh, daughter-in-law but regardless she respected her mother-in-law the mother-in-law also guided her you know so they fulfilled destiny together despite you know um the way the circumstances you know thrown at them we also have the likes of paul and mark i i found paul and mark's story quite very interesting i had to read more about it the fact that Paul and Barnabas were friends, you know, and Mark, I think, was still growing in faith. And because of his growth, you know, he was making mistakes here and there, which honestly, I put myself in Mark's shoes. Like, this is me as a Christian. Sometimes, you know, there are times I just fall. There are times I just fail. And Barnabas could not, you know, he just felt like Bana um, um, Mark was not good enough to be in their clique. He felt that Mark was not holy enough or probably not righteous enough or was not orderly. I don't know what was his problem anyway. So for that reason, he parted way with Paul. Paul and Barnabas had to part way because Paul still believed in Mark. He believed that um, some hope should be given to Mark. He believed that, uh, you know, Mark had the potential to serve God. Mark had the potential to do better for God. He just needed more guidance. He just needed more direction. He just needed more, you know, somebody to, you know. And I mean, he was willing to part with Barnabas just in a bit to help, you know, Paul. You know, but Barnabas on his own, yeah, I'm not blaming him. Perhaps he couldn't just cope with maybe some of the um, character of uh, Mark, some of his you know, uh, character or behavior. But Mark and Paul could see deeper. Paul knew better and was patient with Mark. And I thank God for that because that gave Mark the opportunity to do better, thrive better. I mean, he, today he's, he's part of his, his write-ups are part of the scriptures we read. The book of Mark was written because of the opportunity he was given. So sometimes in friendship, you know, even as a mentor, um, I believe it's not good to just, you know, write off certain people because you think their character is not good enough. Always give people benefit of doubt. I pray God will all give us the grace. You know, I read that and it really touched me. Like when I got to know the story between Paul, Barnabas and Mark. So yeah, having such kind of mentorship friends, we also see that with Elijah and Elisha, you know, mutual respect and love and loyalty, you know, is what kept their friendship. And at the end of the day, we we'll see that it sustained it so much to the a point that Elisha received a double a double portion of anointing of Elijah, which in any way should have been Jehazi. But we saw how Jehazi, out of grief and covetousness, you know, missed out on that anointing and instead received the disease, you know. So it's important that as we are gaining from our mentors, we also have to be loyal and in some sort of way mutually, you know, support, you know, them in all that they are doing. And as we do so, the Lord will help us. So that's about it, about mentorship, friendship. We have also best friends. Yes, I love this a lot because your best friend is what you call your bestie, is what you call your confidant, is what you call your crime partner. You guys share a lot of things. You know, you, there are things you don't hide from each other. You share this, you share your secrets, you pray together, you cry together, you celebrate together, you encourage one another, you know, you give each other a listening ear, you give each other a shoulder, you know, and these best friends could be friends from your childhood, they could be friends from your secondary school, they could be friends you even met during the course of, you know, your marriage or during the course of parenting. You know, God could just bring these friends at any phase of your life, regardless there are people that just make a difference because, you know, they're always there, even in your down times, they are there to hold your hands up. And there are always few. So it's always important that when we have such kind of friends, we should cherish them. People that reach out to you, people that celebrate you, people that, you know, are always having you on their mind, always having you in prayers, always encouraging and supporting you, and they are doing it from the depth of their heart. They are quite rare. So when you take advantage of such kind of best friends, um, they don't come um, by easily. You lose out. 
So it's important for us to identify such people and also appreciate them and, you know, mutually give back the same energy that they are giving us. So best friends, we see that in between John and Jesus, John the beloved, you know, apparently when Jesus was on the cross at the point of crucifixion and all of that, out of fear and all of that, um, despair, all the disciples were nowhere to be found except John the beloved. He was there by the master's feet, you know, with um, the mother of Jesus. You know, I actually thought it was only the mother of Jesus, but apparently John was there, John the beloved. So it's good for us to have such kind of, I mean, Jesus had that friendship. That's so much closeness with John that John could not even resist, you know, turning away his back. So I pray the Lord will help us. If you are yet to find such a best friend, um, I pray the Lord will guide you. But most importantly, be encouraged that Jesus can be your best friend. Jesus should be, in fact, your best friend. Because, I mean, I always say it, human beings are actually, you are all limited, myself inclusive. Um, there's only so much we can give, but we have Jesus that gives everything. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He knew us even time before we were born. So having Jesus as your best friend is, he understands you. He knows when you are down. He knows when you are weary. He understands the complicated nature of which every human being is being born. He understands your uniqueness. You know, there's a particular extent to which even your best friend could understand you. There are certain behaviors that you could show and your friend will be like, ah, I don't know this side of Ella. But Jesus knows that side of Ella. And if we are willing to be vulnerable with him, I mean, there isn't any disappointment to it. So I just want to encourage somebody watching and say, oh, I don't have a best friend. Remember, Jesus is your best friend. You just have to watch out. John chapter 15 will also um, encourage you if you read that whole John chapter 15. He chose you. You did not choose him. So be encouraged and, you know, trust that Jesus is always there for you through the work of the Holy Spirit as well. You know, when you have the Holy Spirit as a comforter, I mean, yes, friends are good. Friends are very important. They are very essential. But uh, you, you can't underestimate or underrate, you know, the role of, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, in terms of friendship. So we have the sixth one, the lifelong friends. These ones are friends that you have kept for so long. I have a, I have quite a number of them, and I know there are people that I don't even forget their numbers. Like without batting my eyelid, you know, I their numbers just comes to my mind when I need to call one, one or two of them. Yeah, my I make that call true, and we talk, and you know, so lifelong friends could even be your childhood friends. It could be your your high school friends. You know, there are friends that you have, you've had over a long course of time and regardless of, you know, misunderstanding and all of that, you always find a way to, you know, navigate all those things and, you know, keep the friendship going. And even when you don't even call all the time, it doesn't affect your relationship because you all have each other at heart, you know. Then we'll have seasonal friends, friends that come in a certain season of life and then it's actually, unfortunately, there are times we just need to say goodbye either parting in a good way or in a bad way perhaps because of the behavior or um you know the kind of experiences or circumstances you have faced with them you know so seasonal friends you know sometimes could be changing um relocating or changing your um address your house address could be the reason why your seasons parted or you just find out that the friendship is no longer you know going smoothly as it used to be you just um, slowly just drifting apart. You know, there's a saying that goes, um, 20 friends can play forever for 20 years. So when you find yourself experiencing such seasonal friendship, just remind yourself that um, 20 friends can play together for 20 years. Yes, it happens. So life goes on, you know. So depending on how you're led, you can still be checking on the person and depending on your experiences, you know, but I always advise that it's never good to part in a negative way. No matter what the friend has done, be it a good or bad experience, it's always good to leave with closing the door um, gently because, like, you never know where life will throw you, uh, what life will throw at you tomorrow. So, regardless of whatever anybody has done to you, it's always good to leave, um, um, leave uh, to part peacefully. It's good to, um, live in such a way that you can always, you know, go back and knock on the door or, you know, to call and uh, reach out. But if you parted in a negative way, perhaps, you know, with um, uh, drama and all of that, 
such a person might not even want to entertain you for the rest of his or her life so it's important the way we part ways if it's actually a seasonal friend finally we have what we call um general friends so in terms of general friends general friends are just friends that could be your neighbor your church member your colleague at work sometimes you hang out and have nice time and then perhaps just part away for a while again and then maybe when need be you could just give it ring each other you know but no sense of you know there's no i don't know how you know that's sharing of bond and all that is not there just they're just general friends so depending on who you are people that are introvert hardly have general friends they used to have close friends but social butterflies tend to have a lot of general friends and few very close friends so with that being said i think i've done justice to the healthy side of friends we should have moving on to the unhealthy part you know yeah so on the unhealthy part i will start with number one self-righteous friends the self-righteous friends are actually believers i'm telling you like <laughs> they they can quote from genesis to revelation i tell you and they are quick to like when you face a situation say ah it's the work of the devil it's because you didn't do this and they, they are doing it and you you're not doing it right it was always them doing so i used to call them miss two good issues you know because everything is always right in their own in their own side in fact it, i don't think they usually have any issue even though they do so the self-righteous friends um you know sometimes they might not even know or knowingly appear to be righteous and sometimes we even do it even myself you know as i was studying on it i was like ah lord forgive me if i've been self-righteous in any way so it takes the holy spirit to remind you that ah, this is how to correct somebody this is how to correct your friend you correct with um you know the, the scripture says let your words be seasoned with grace i think colossians 4 verse 6. so even if your friend is going wrong you don't need to be too self-righteous and start making her understand that it's god's judgment that is coming upon her and all of that no you know with grace you you encourage the person you know and if there are scriptures you need to refer you do it from a point of empathy so self-righteous friends you know there's no empathy it's just about judgment and god's judgment does not come on, upon man like that it will surprise you that <laughs> that person that has been self-righteous and all that even you that is going through that situation the moment you come out of it you boom and you know supersede whoever that person is so let's just be careful not to fall into this category of self-righteous friendship we also have the cliche friends that are quick to say it is well whatever you share with them it is well they have nothing to say it's just they are just it's just that cliche thing and it is well it's well with the righteous what more do you have to give what advice do you have what depth or insight you have to give to your friend so it's important to also note that if you find yourself in a category of being just a cliche friend you are not doing enough you are just like on the surface level and that could be very unhealthy especially if the other friend is putting so much um inv is investing so much in the friendship you know i believe that friendship should be mutual so um don't just take it on the surface if that friend it values you and invest so much in you then we also have the ones that are called the fix it friend you know they are quick to fix your issue whether bad in whether in a good way or a bad way or, you know they are all about ah, let's fix it let's fix it first of all a friend has to understand the struggle you're having especially if it's something that has to do with grief give you time to grieve you know and be patient with you not quick to fix without you know taking it patiently with you as a friend and people that are quick to fix things they actually seek the fastest way or a cunning way like we saw with absalom and his friend i've forgotten the name of his friend that you know led in david's son that had a friend that advised him to sleep with the sister and planned a very cunning way to do it you saw how that led to the death um, the death of um, David's son. So uh, it's, good, it's good to be very careful when you have friends that are quick to give advices on how to fix solution. You also seek with the Holy Spirit if such suggestions um, are beneficial so that it doesn't affect your destiny or purpose in life. So we have the log in the eye friends, you know, the ones that are quick to notice the log in the eye, yeah, the, the chip in your eye without removing the log in their own eyes. Um, sadly, if we look into retrospect, it's good to also search ourselves. As I said, as I'm dishing this out, I'm also addressing myself. I'm not leaving myself out of it. So it's good that when we address issues with our friends, we should also put ourselves in their shoes. You know, not necessarily making it look like all is good and rosy for us. You know, sometimes you, you could realize that the log in the eye friends are actually, um, you know, magnifying your problems more than what they're actually going through. So, I mean, it's also important for us to understand when or identify friends that are quick to, you know, point out and 
keep emphasizing or picking on faulty um, things that they're finding out about you you know so that is something to give a check and also to set boundaries on because it could be very unhealthy next we have is your oversensitive friends which are quite dramatic there's a lot of drama they are quick to cry they are quick to you know uh, in fact they even cry more than you that is going through a situation yes yeah, sometimes i can find myself in that situation as i was sort of like lord i'm also very oversensitive oh. but one thing i've noticed that when i get too oversensitive with you know maybe what a friend shared with me the Holy spirit helps me to discipline myself like Put yourself in order you're supposed to be encouraging not being too emotional about this situation so when you find yourself being too oversensitive you need the holy spirit to help you also need to help yourself to put yourself comport yourself in order so that you be strong enough to help whoever your friend is moving on we'll have the one-sided friendship this i find it very very scary especially at this phase of my life you know when you feel like you are giving so much you're investing so much you know, you're always the one giving the initiation of decisions. You're the ones um, always solving the problem, asking, you know, checking on the friend, calling the friend. And then the same energy is not being reciprocated. It's not being communicated. You're always the one um, listening to the, the, the story or the complaints of the friend without even she even hearing from you. At the end of the day, you get depleted, you get drained. You know, you're always the one reaching out. You're always the one buying and helping whatever situation she's faced with. You're quick to run out. And, and the same energy is not receiving. At some point, you run out of, you know, energy. And if your care is not taken, you realize that you're only draining yourself. So it's important to find out those friends that we're investing so much in, are they also investing? And when I mean invest, I don't, I don't mean like in terms of materialistic investment. You know, a friend that you are helping so much or encouraging, if she does not have the same material means to return, we also find a way or find means to, you know, play her own part of, you know, investing in the relationship that you also will cherish, you also will, you know, appreciate. So friendship is, is reciprocal. They have to, the energy has to at least be of balance. So when it's one-sided, it becomes parasitic, it becomes unhealthy. So moving on, we have the ambivalent um, friendship. You know, ambivalence, when you look at the, um, the dictionary, ambivalent means they have mixed feelings. Today they are not sure if they are your friend. Tomorrow they are not. Sure, they are sure. They, you know they are they, they are not. They are not certain how how much they value. And meanwhile, you are paying. Yeah, you are you are carrying them so high. You know you value them so much. So when you have friends that are ambivalent, I mean, the energy will also not be equal. You know because you are doing all the loving, you are doing all the support, you are doing all the caring, and on their own part they are not even sure what exactly, what category, or what exactly they call it. They're not even sure if you fit into their term or definition of friendship. So that is also important that you sit back in retrospect and check the kind of friends you're having. And do you think they're having mixed feelings towards, you know, your investment in the relationship? You know, it's important to pay attention to such. Then next we have is a codependent friendship. With terms of codependent friendship, it means that both of you are depending so much on each other. I mean, you rely so much on each other. Like you, uh, uh, the, the other person's validation means a lot to you and you to your validation means a lot to her. And um, if you, you, you are so clingy on one another, if you don't call each other every day, it's like the world is ending. And when that one does not call, she feels pressure to call you know so that codependency i don't think god that was the plan of god for anyone at all to be so codependent on each other because you now replace the place of god in the life of that person that person will begin to gradually lose his or her identity you know because he or she is depending on you know your information concerning what she wants to do your validation and not necessarily god's you know approval or validation so when you find yourself in a situation where you 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 need somebody's validation you need your friend's validation you need your friends and um, you know you are so focused on what she has to say about what you have and what you don't have what you can give and what you can't give steps you should take and steps you shouldn't take without even you know seeking the face of god on certain decisions then you also have to check and put boundaries i believe that when it comes to codependent friendship um you can work on it you guys have to be intentional and you know 
talk to each other about it you know speak to each other about it um understand how you both can fix boundaries you know everybody needs some sense of space you know even in marriage it's important yes to be very um intimate with your spouse and all of that but at a certain level god should not replace you know you don't use your spouse to replace the place of god even in marriage so it's important that as much as you depend on each other um, much dependence to be on god yes you depend on one another but let your core dependence be on god so um, i'm moving on to the next one before the last is the one i call fake friends so fake friends i don't know if they actually know that they are fake i don't know we hear a lot of people calling people fake but the truth is that if somebody is a fake friend you know the friend will not have any reason to even invest in you number one the friend will not have any reason to make time to visit you or spend with you and the friend will not even be you know encouraged uh will not find anything you do encouraging they always find a way to discourage you they always find a way to bring you down either consciously or unconsciously demeaning words are being thrown helter here and there you know in their statements you know in terms of your progress they're always speaking on things that are not going well yes i understand that critics is good but there's something we call destructive criticism so when a friend is giving you is criticizing you in a destructive way you know i'm always pointing out things that you're not doing without addressing or appreciating things that you're doing then is turning towards fake friendship or is not able to stand up for you in the public you know or you know when you share things maybe on, like on social media that's where i actually know who are my real friends so you know i mean if i share something that i feel like is something to you know um what do i say now something you need to celebrate with me for and then you're just quiet <laughs> I, I start reading meanings to it because I mean, especially if you are someone I call a very good friend, you just act like you didn't see it or ignore it. To me, I, I, I put a red mark on that. So things like that, you know, friends that are not always there to, you know, support you and give their, you know, they do it privately. And even when they do it, you see that the energy is not... You know, I pray God will give us discernment to feel energy because sometimes what we see on the outside is very far from what is on the inside. So finally, I wrap up with the ones we call toxic friendship, which is also related to, you know, fake kind of friendship. Because in terms of toxicity, they you notice that they are interests about your welfare. It's not, you know. They are not happy about anything going well in your life. They are not happy about the progress you are making. You know, everything becomes a drama. When you're having issues, you try to resolve with them. They blow a mountain out of a molehill, you know. So, and in terms of your their behavior, also it rubs off on you. Each time you have a discussion with them, you end up feeling drained. So these are things you pick up from narcissistic or toxic friendship. And at the end of the day, if you still keep up with such kind of, you know, friendship, it affects you, it affects your lifestyle, it affects your decision making, it affects your perspective to life, especially if you are depending on such kind of people, you know, in decisions you have to make, you realize that you keep, you know, taking the wrong decisions and you don't give God the opportunity to help you, direct you, guide you, comfort you. So I think I've said enough about unhealthy friendship and the types of, um, the uh, you know, the things, the traits we see in unhealthy friendships and healthy friendships. I pray that as much as friendship is very important to us all, that the Lord will help us, you know, pay attention to all of these um, traits and futures. They come in different ways, in subtle ways. Um, I pray that the Lord will give us the sensitivity. And even for us as human beings, myself inclusive and you watching, you know, for God to pay to help us pay attention to every area of our life uh, that is making us, <clears throat> you know, display any of these negative tendencies. As I said, some of them start very subtly, like being self-righteous. You know, you might find yourself you're a good person, you're a godly person, but you're a self-righteous friend. Like you're holier than thou. You give you put that mentality out to your friend. And then you begin to make your friend feel uncomfortable. So as much as you might think you're a good friend, they're actually tending towards being toxic when you keep up doing that. So we pray the Holy Spirit will help us in all that we do. Even when it comes to correcting our friends, we should do it in love. I pray that you are blessed by this. And I hope that as you watch, it will also help you to, you know, 
sit back and look into retrospect areas in your life that you need to set boundaries in terms of friendship and areas in your life that you need to trust God for in order to do better as a friend. God bless you and see you next episode. Bye.